now coming to a tracheal resection in the upper part of the trachea and LMA is being inserted now and a circuit is connected and the patient is being ventilated and a bronchoscopy is passed in the LMA and here you can see the tracheal mass in the screen. Here you can see the tracheal mass in the upper trachea. Now an incision is made and the resection of the trachea in the lower part is done and a standard endotracheal tube is passed in the lower part of the trachea. So now you will ventilate with this tube then tracheal resection is carried out and this part is re-anastomose. Initially the posterior part is being anastomose then the tube is removed there will be a transient period of apnea then the suture on the anterior aspect will happen and you can ventilate through the LMA. And two other things which you do in the post procedure period is maintain the flexion of the head in the anterior position. Another one is Montagari tube or a tracheostomy tube can be passed in some cases. Montagari tube can maintain the patency of the airway. These two things you also follow in the post operative period. This is for upper tracheal resection. Now coming to tracheal resection at the lower part of the trachea, you intubate with a single lumen tube above the lesion and you ventilate the patient. Now your resection is done at the lower part and an endobronchial tube is placed into the left main stem bronchus and ventilation is carried on with this tube. Then the resection of the involved part of the trachea is done and this two part is anastomose again. Initially you do the posterior anastomosis. Once the posterior anastomosis is done and the endobronchial tube is removed and then an anterior anastomosis is done. Once anterior anastomosis is done, this tube can be advanced past the stenosis into the left main stem bronchus and ventilator or passed beyond the anastomosis and can be used to ventilate. The airway is examined with fiber optic bronchoscopic with the laryngeal mask airway both before and after the procedure. That is very important. You have to view the airway before and after the procedure. An alternative management is to begin the case with rigid bronchoscopy and tracheal dilatation and then pass the single lumen through the stenosis. You do a rigid bronchoscopy, relieve the obstruction and pass the single lumen tube across the stenosis. The tube is withdrawn into the proximal trachea once the distal trachea is open and patient converted to cross field ventilation. You pull the tube up, open up the trachea and do a cross field ventilation. With the low tracheal lesion, a right thoracotomy provides optimal surgical exposure with cross field ventilation to the lung, distal to the resection via open chest. When it is low tracheal, you cannot go through cervical and you go with the right thoracotomy. The intubation can be with single lumen endotracheal tube or an endobronchial tube. Once posterior anastomosis is completed, the tube is advanced past the site of resection. The technique can be also used for carinal resection. After tracheal resection is completed, most patients are kept in a position of next flexion to reduce the tension on the suture line. 